So we will go ahead and, and begin and I'll get us started and we can elect a chairperson and a vice chair. Uh, thank you all for participating today in the, in the Zoom meeting and, and we appreciate all that you do and, and we appreciate you supporting this county. Russell, would you go ahead and call the roll, please? Eugene Campbell. Here. Jenna Mead. Here. Sally Snyder. Oh, Sally's muted again. Hold on. Let me unmute Sally. I'm here. Okay, there we got it. Mike Taylor. Here. We do have everyone present, so we will go ahead and begin. The first order of business, uh, we will open the floor to nominations for a chairperson and take care of that, and then we'll do a vice chair. Is, is there someone willing to nominate someone for chairperson for this audit committee? I nominate Sally Snyder. Sally Eugene, Snyder. Eugene, has... you beat me. <laughs> <laughs> Sally, has, Sally has been uh, nominated for chairperson. Uh, is there further nominations? Is I, there I nominate motion? Eugene Campbell. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now we have two nominees. We have Sally Snyder and Eugene Campbell. Is there other nominations? Hearing none, let's see. How is the best way to, let's uh, do a roll call. And when your name is called, you can vote either for Sally Snyder or Eugene Campbell. And there we go. And uh, I think that will probably be the way we can do it. So Russell, call the roll, please. I expect each of you, if you wouldn't mind, to vote for Sally Snyder or Eugene Campbell. All right, Eugene. Sally. Okay. <laughs> Jenna. Eugene. Okay. And Sally. Eugene. <laughs> Gee, thanks, girls. <laughs> Any time. Girl power. Chair. Eugene. Uh, <laughs> You are now the chair. Congratulations. And I will let you take over the meeting and you can continue with uh, getting yourself a, a vice chair. Thank you, Eugene. Now I'll take nominations for our vice chair. I nominate Sally Snyder. <laughs> she is not going to escape. <laughs> Any more nominations? So can we move to cease nominations? I'll make that motion if I'm permitted to do so. You are ER. I second that motion. Okay. Do we need the vote? Since only one. Uh, since we're since we're doing this electronically, let's just go ahead. I'll call the roll and just let everybody vote. Okay. Jenna Mead. Yes. Sally Snyder. You can pass. Yes. <laughs> Eugene Campbell. Yes. Okay. And now we'll approve the minutes of the May second, twenty nineteen, audit committee meeting. I have a motion to approve. I make a motion. Second. Okay, I got a motion by Sally and second by Jenna. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes, roll call. Jenna Mead. Yes. Sally Snyder. Yes. Eugene Campbell. Yes. Mike Taylor. Yes. Okay, on the number four review of section five of the establishment of the audit committee for Johnson County. All right, if, I'll, I, if you don't care, I'll pick it up from here. Basically, yeah. just, this is just an annual reminder of the purpose of the audit committee. The audit committee is 
is basically put in place to take an annual review of the audit report from the prior year, looking at findings uh, and also establishing a means of reporting fraud. And the chairperson will make an annual presentation of the committee's findings and recommendations at, in this case, will be tomorrow evening at the, at the June County Commission meeting. You know, the, the committee reviews, uh, is to review and establish a procedure for, 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 good Lord, for reporting fraud, waste, and abuse through the Comptroller of the Treasury, through their hotline that is listed, which is posted in this building and every, every other public building. And also they can visit the Comptrollers uh, of the Treasury's website at www.comptroller.tn.gov to be able to report those findings. Any questions about the the establishment of the audit committee and what and what your duties are? No. 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 Okay. Then, if you want, Eugene, I'll just take the next one as well. The review yes. of the 1819 findings. Okay. In your packet, it starts at the bottom. I started with page 215, and I basically copied this out of last year's annual, out of last year's audit report. And this first page is simply just a, it's a, it is a summary of the prior year financial statement findings. And for the 17-18 year, we had three findings. We had one with the mayor's office. There was one, two with, excuse me, one was the, with the mayor's office regarding pre-numbered receipts, which we have corrected. And then we had a second one that we had we had some deficiencies in budget operations that affected the the mayor's office, my office, and the director of schools. And then uh, part A of that, would, which would be the mayor, was corrected, but parts B and C were not corrected. And there is a copy of a, a correction action plan that in, is in the back that the director of schools wrote that dealt with uh, personnel line items exceeding budgetary and approved amounts. And we have since then have corrected that as well, and that should drop off as the Comptroller's Office does the audit for this year. And then the third one was with the Office of the of, with the Property Assessor, where uh, the State Office had caught some things and had had asked Matthew to write a corrective action plan to deal with with what they had found regarding the appraisement of property, and that has also been corrected. Then the set, the next page, 200, that's at the bottom, 216. This is just a summary of the auditor's results that basically says that uh, you know we have internal control, we have no material weaknesses, we do have some deficiencies. Uh, they also look at federal awards and their threshold for looking at federal awards is seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars. And typically, with that threshold, the only federal funds that are audited are audited on the school department side because of the, the amount of the awards that they receive. And the most important thing is we do qualify as what's called a low-risk auditee, which is something that we want to have. And then on page 217, it gets into the two, to the two findings that we have for current year that are part of the 1819. The first one was school department has deficiencies in purchasing procedures. This is one that's been here for a couple of years and the school department has been working to be able to correct that. They have put some additional uh, safeguards into place and some internal controls that actually we are hoping that we will, for the most part, see either a reduction in this finding or actually a removal of this finding in the upcoming year uh, until an audit completes the process and we see what the recommendations are. We're not for sure. They have tightened up their procedures regarding how purchase orders are issued uh, at the bus garage, as well as making sure that they're following their their guidelines that are in their board policy that regards with the with the advertisement and bidding of items that exceed a threshold of ten thousand dollars. And there is a management response from the director of schools, and I believe she also had submitted a. Uh, plan of corrective action is also in the back as well. And then the second one deals with uh, the director of schools office in my office where we still had some deficiency, deficiencies in budget operations that are listed. Uh, I unfortunately had a situation last year that I had a category that actually ran a complete budget over because of a, of a 
error on my part for not catching to make sure that we had enough appropriations to finish the year. And then the general purpose school, we were still having some issue with some salary related line items that were being pushed over what both the board and the commission had approved as being available funds to cover salaries. And we are hoping that, that, that this, all, this finding will go away as well with the end of the current year. I did not write a response to this. I, I basically accepted what the director of schools wrote as part of that response. And that are the two findings that are from current year, from last year. And we also, we had no findings or questionable costs related to any of the federal awards that were looked at by the auditors for 1819. And then on page 221 starts the corrective action plans. And these are both from the director of schools that deal with those two, that deal with those two findings since the bulk of those findings do, were, the direct, were the school department's findings. And then at the very back page on page 224 is best practice, which we have each year. The comptroller's office recommends that since we do have centralized accounting, that we also need to have centralized purchasing. Uh, but however, it has been separated between county and school operations for years. But under the 1957 Act, we are, the school department is allowed to actually withdraw from central purchasing and they chose to do that several years ago. Any questions? I don't have any. Okay. So tomorrow night, what the, well, I need to, to say uh, in front of the board about this meeting. Okay. What I'll do, Eugene, is I'll actually prepare the minutes and then I'll kind of pull a synopsis together that you can, you know, three or four sentences that you can read basically stating that we met. We discussed the prior year findings and that that the committee, I'm assuming that the committee will accept the, the recommendations and the corrective action plans as they're posted. And that, you know, as part of the audit, as part of our process, that's what our function is, is to, to review these findings and also provide any guidance or recommendations above what's published. Okay. I'll help you with it. All right, thanks. Hey, Russell, I have a question. I know since I've been on the audit committee, I mean, with the, the school system, this has been, this finding has been on there, you know, I, I feel like ever since, you know, I've been involved with it. Um, if it continues to be on there, I mean, could we think about changing it back over? Uh as far as the purchasing is concerned, that yes. would be a question that we would need to address to Perry. Uh, I am not sure how once a school system removes itself from central purchasing, I don't know the procedure to be able to put, to actually incorporate them back in. So that that's actually, that'll be a Perry Stout question. Okay. And that's something that we, we can ask him for him to find out. Okay. Okay, I guess on to number six. Are there any other matters which may duly come before the committee for official action today? And since we're at the end, just as a synopsis, the uh, mayor and myself, the highway department uh, superintendent and the director of schools actually had our official entrance conference with the uh, with the auditors yesterday and so they're about a couple of months into into our review process and our audit the hope for the to finish up late next month early august like we've done in the past several years mr chairman that's all i have all right anybody else have anything i don't i don't have anything i don't have a motion to adjourn. I make that motion. I second the motion. All right. Is that all we need, Russ? That's all we need. And I'll help you. I'll get things pulled together and give you a synopsis to be able to use tomorrow night. All right. So, thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys for serving on this committee. You're welcome. <laughs> thanks, guys. Thank uh, you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. I was getting telephone.
can't blow. He's gonna be twisted.